This is a really good follow-up to their debut from a few years ago, which I thought was pretty promising. The band this time around have refined their synth pop slash alternative rock sound to a fine T, and there are a lot of quality tracks on here that are well produced and have choruses that absolutely pop. Love You to Death is a great opener that has these deliciously funky licks. Pretty Great is a perfect mopey, melodramatic tune, and Listen has a pretty electrifying dance beat adjacent to the song's sadder lyrics, which is essentially the motif on nearly every song here, you know, to just dance away the pain. And that aspect really sours the closing title track for me because in my opinion, it just seems unnecessary to have a trackless budding with danceable and sometimes a few rocking tracks that have this uh, juxtaposition with lyrics and themes only for you to end it with a subpar piano ballad. But uh, nitpick aside, uh, outside of that, the rest of the album is pretty fun and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. It's an okay covers album. I've definitely heard her do better, especially with her first one back in 2000. Chan covers songs from the likes of Frank Ocean, Lana Del Rey, Nick Cave, Iggy Pop, and they're sung and performed in her signature minimal indie rock sound. And her performances are solid. Like there's nothing wrong with the musicianship or anything, but none of the covers here really did anything uh, for me to kind of show a new perspective or a new side to them. As I listened to it, I did notice that there were a few liberties taken with some of the songs like a uh, bad religion where she sings the lyrics in a completely different tune but that wasn't really enough for me to kind of be all in on it it's pleasant to listen to uh but it's not really an essential listen if you're a fan of hers in my opinion This is a pretty mild follow-up to his debut album, which I thought was pretty good. The backbone of it is how candid and introspective Corday is about his life experiences. The song Mama's Hood comes to mind, where in one of the verses he mentions how the loss of a friend over a pretty minor squabble uh, took a pretty big effect on him to the point where he couldn't even show up at his funeral. Want For Me talks about like these lofty expectations of him that he feels that are unfairly put on top of him. And you know, Jean Michelle, which is the second track where he kind of just unloads his thoughts onto a page and wraps it out. I appreciate the sentiments he's willing to uh, share with a wider audience, but when it boils down to the music itself, it's pretty underwhelming in most instances. The beats for a good portion of the album can feel drab and also feel like they're being recycled unintuitively. The flows and verses can stagnate, especially in the, uh, the middle of the track listing. I think that's where the album is probably at its lowest point, but it does end strong with songs like Chronicles, uh, Champagne Glass, with Freddie Gibbs and Stevie Wonder, which is a hell of a track, my favorite on here for sure, and West Side Lake, which is a pretty uh, effective closer in my opinion. It's not bad by any means, but I guess I was hopeful for a bit more. <laughs> It's a pretty enjoyable indie rock, indie pop album. The band plays around with some sounds of disco on songs like This Car Drives All By Itself. Uh, they also middle around with post-punk on uh, People Don't Change People, Time Does, and even bombastic pop rock with uh, Wildfire, which is very akin to like, something you hear from like the 70s or the 80s. There were a handful of songs that I will uh, definitely keep in my rotation. I think the biggest issue I had with the album was that uh, a lot of the song's durations just did not hold all that well. Like outside of the, the choruses, the like the verses and instrumental passages and segues just uh, didn't keep me invested in them 100% of the time. The performances vocally and instrumentally are, are good, but more often than not, I was uh, finding myself passively listening to songs until the chorus kicked in for me to kind of invest in them. It's highly enjoyable, like I said. Uh, I think most people who listen to it will uh, have a pretty good time. The duo really put an emphasis on producing these heightened 80s horror-esque atmospheres and it shows on every song here, especially on the gravelly opener. Other songs like Morbid Fascination possesses this dirgy synth rock, Murder Me has these spectral background wails, and Give It Up has such an eerie progression, it's almost an unrecognizable song from when it starts to uh, when it finishes. Nearly every song has a distinct quality about it, and while some cuts don't maintain that level of quality with songs like uh, Begging and 427 feeling like they 
they drag on or just don't have as much inspiration behind them. I felt like as a whole, it's a really good album and uh, probably one of their better ones in uh, quite a bit of time. I really like this one. Uh, I think this would have uh, been a perfect album to release around Halloween. Oh, it's so good. It's so dreamy and psychedelic and blissful. Bonobo comes through again with songs I can just close my eyes to and let the music just take me and cleanse me. One of my favorites, for example, Rosewood starts out with a soft electric groove that builds up into almost like a deep sea club jam. And all that buildup is released in such a satisfactory way. I can say the same about songs like uh, Age of Phase, Sapien, and Otomo. The beats are great. The sample work uh, is pretty cool. What truly stands out to me and I think to a lot of other people are just how great uh, the tracks with the vocal guests are. Shadows with Jordan Rakai or Rakai, I hope I'm pronouncing either of those correctly. Uh, is a nightly wonder. Tides with Jamila Woods is lovely and euphoric. Day by Day with Catch a Bennett is surprisingly jazzy and uh, Joji croons beautifully on From You. I love this album. I highly recommend it. Coming off of how much of a deflated and defeated experience some rap songs was, Sick in comparison is like a mild breakup and I don't mean that in a negative light nor do I want to insinuate that Earl only makes good music when he's in a dark place. I'm more referring to the sonic direction that Sick takes which is uh, pretty interesting considering the, uh, the mixings of west coast hip hop and abstract hip hop with flavors of trap and jazz. Earl's deadpan nonchalant delivery has a bit more pep in its step this time around. Uh, he's just as witty and as thoughtful as before. The vibe is just uh, elevated in comparison. Even the darker tracks like God Laughs and Fire in the Hole have this sense of uh, clarity to them that uh, some songs off of some rap songs uh, weren't. That was a mouthful. <laughs> some of the features here are killer, most notably Arm and Hammer, like Billy Woods just rips up his verse. <laughs> the album's biggest issue to me is uh, just cohesion in terms of like sounds and uh, some songs not playing off of each other in a thematic way. <laughs> I think that's like a, a global critique a lot of people have of the album, but uh, even then, uh, I still feel like it's really good. I have been uh, more and more fond of Earl's stuff lately, and uh, this album uh, helped quite a bit in that regard. Big fan. First caught wind of this artist off of the last two Mellow album, uh, they had uh, quite an interesting contribution on one of the songs there, so I decided to keep tabs to uh, just see what they were up to. This is their debut EP, and it is pretty ambitious with the things it tries. The song Pay No Mind, for example, is really worbly and textured in the instrumental department behind the, uh, the meta slash infomercial-esque uh, vocal performances. Disappear starts off with like soothing electroacoustics before it progresses into a like a jubilant video game village tune with woodwinds and big ass drums. And I Want to See the Angels is this pristine instrumental that makes me feel like frolicking through a magical forest. This EP is pretty dope in my opinion. A uh, really good first impression and it will be interesting to see where things go from here. When I hear FKA Twigs' name, I often associate it with her weird abstract pop music that she makes that's able to discreetly tether itself in the realm of being accessible in some form with projects like Magdalene, Melissa, and uh, LP1. This new one of hers is easily her most accessible work yet with sounds of alternative R&B, trip hop, electro pop mixed with flavors of uh, trap here and there. Songs that come to mind include Light Beamers, uh, My Love, and uh, that song with The Weeknd. What I admire about it is that its accessibility isn't necessarily given a trade-off, like it's not overtly basic, nor is it like catering to some of the more recent trends in music. Like, yeah, it's nowhere near the level of weird, say, on her past projects, but uh, you still get some songs like uh, Pappy Bones with Shy Girl, Careless with Daniel Caesar, and Thank You Song, where she is still very much a, a distinct personality, a very recognizable personality. With 17 tracks, though, not every song was something to remember, and I think it would have benefited from a bit of trimming, as I think uh, a couple of the songs uh, kind of sound derivative of one another. Other, but I really liked it. I think Capra Songs is a decent starting point for those of you who were uh, unable to get into Twig's music at first.
This album is beautiful, my goodness. Uh, if you have heard of uh, Hikaru Hutada through Kingdom Hearts and you haven't given her deeper discography a listen, you are doing yourself a great disservice, especially if you miss out on this one. Bad Mode is bursting at the seams with delectable and endearing art pop, house, alternative R&B, and you can feel every bit of earnest emotion through her vocals regardless of what language she's singing in. The production across the board is very layered and is able to convey a wide array of emotional depth with horns and strings. The rhythms and melodies are immaculate and they just stick in your head. Some of my favorites include, I hope I don't butcher these, uh, Kibunja Naono, uh, One Last Kiss, and uh, Daira Nemo Iwanai. The only track I wasn't all in on was uh, the 12 minute closer somewhere in Marseilles and that's because the ideas on that song are too scarce to justify a 12 minute runtime, and it leads to a lot of bloat in my opinion. But regardless, uh, I loved this album, highly recommend and it's uh, my album of the week. So those are my thoughts on the albums I listened to last week. There were a few more I wanted to include but couldn't due to time restraints so I will be sure to include them in next week's video. But I also want to hear uh, what you guys listen to. Uh, what are your thoughts on the albums I mentioned? Were there some I missed? Uh, you know, let me know down in the comments down below. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing and I will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching.